I used to listen to Tupac and Eminem, but Alhamdulillah, my life has changed since then. I woke up and I realized this life was all pretend. I changed my ways and I made some new friends. Let me introduce you to one. His name's Mufti Menk. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, it's so good to have you here, Mufti. How are you feeling? Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah. It's good to be with you in such good company, Honestly, man. it's an absolute honor and a privilege for you to be here. And I'm so thankful that Allah has blessed us with your presence. May Allah bless all of us uh, on the day of Qiyamah with the forgiveness and Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Nice glasses, Mufti. Well, yours look quite different. You got different. the memo, yeah. This is, I, don't, I don't really wear glasses, but I felt like for this podcast, I wanted to make it special and I wanted to actually see my beautiful guest. You won't believe there was a bit of telepathy and we happened to Allah, Mufti, do the same thing. Allah. I will call myself a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. Someone says, what are you? I'm a Muslim. But what exactly are you? I'm a Muslim. I'm exactly a Muslim. You know, if 10,000 of the mashayikh can get onto TikTok, we'd actually have a coup. <laughs> <laughs> but but do you ever feel like Allah is going to ask me about this? Like, 100%, uh, like, all the time. <laughs> Every time I feel that Allah is going to ask me and, and I, I, I do a lot of istighfar, seek the forgiveness of Allah because you never know. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon Mufti Mink has passed away. How do you want to be remembered? We're actually recording this on the eve of the Christchurch terror attack. And Mufti Menk is actually in Australia for an event that was supposed to go ahead to commemorate and remember the lives of all those who were killed in Christchurch last year. Sheikh, how does it feel knowing that it's been a whole year since this tragic event? Well, I think, you know, as negative as that particular incident was, if we look at the positives that came out of it, we will realize that there is a hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some divine wisdom that made that happen. We have not lost in the sense that there are shuhada on one side and positivity on the other. So both of those are good for us. Uh, when If people didn't believe, they would say that we've lost these people forever. As much as it is a loss in terms of life that is unacceptable, but as mu'mineen, we look at it as shahada, we look at it as martyrdom, they were meant to pass away anyway on that date because that's what we believe in uh, decree of Allah, destiny, qada wal qadar. So uh, a year has passed. It's unbelievable. Firstly, time passed so quick. Secondly, the lessons we learned from it and uh, what we should be doing in order to ensure that we educate the masses that this doesn't happen again. Subhanallah. I actually remember like a, a tweet went viral, Sheikh. I remember last year they said that this man he intended to stop the spread of islam this terrorist he intended to stop the spread of islam through his action yeah what happened all of the women in new zealand donned the hijab the khutbah was aired on live television around the world the adhan it was it was called in the parliament house of new zealand and he just goes to show you this man tried to, to try to stop islam but subhanallah they plot and they plan and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's the best of players. You know, my experience is every single time, without exception, when someone tries to extinguish the light of the Quran and the Sunnah, their very actions result in it actually being promoted in a bigger way than they ever imagined. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Every single time. That's incredible, Sheikh. That's incredible. And unfortunately, we know that the event didn't go ahead as planned due to coronavirus which is unfortunately taking the world by storm this new COVID-19 taking the world by storm we're not only talking about events and mass gatherings that are being cancelled we're talking about the haram yani the, the, the city that never sleeps has finally come to a pause and we're having masajid around the world that are saying Sallu fi buyutikum, pray in your homes it's madness Sheikh. it is but we have to rise to the occasion and face reality I can confess that at the beginning when I heard about Corona, I thought it was being a bit exaggerated. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, this thing is going to die down and so on. And, you know, there are a lot of conspiracy theories and so on. But when we started seeing the impact on the ground, then I said, you know what? We as leaders should be saying the right thing. Subhanallah. And, uh, you know, people are panic buying. People are... Toilet paper's gone mad in Australia. Shelves are completely cleared. It's, it's crazy. You know, it's actually prohibited to go to the masjid 
when you know that you are you could be affected Allah. because to you know to affect a fellow human with a disease or with a virus of this nature its prohibition is far greater than you know anything else because you have to save life remember if a person's life is at stake they're actually at some point allowed to consume that which may be prohibited otherwise in order to save the life the reason is the prohibition of that thing is not as bad as the prohibition of the loss of life subhanallah so those people who think well you know what i'm pious i've never missed my juma i know i do have a bit of a cough i know i do have but let me just go they're actually perpetrating something heinous very it's a major sin actually you know there was a brother in one of the middle eastern countries where he 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 was in quarantine in the hospital he disappeared on friday at 1 o'clock he came back at 2:30 they told him where did you go he said i went to salat al juma and he had the virus and and it's just a shame that people think no how could you say this this is juma but you know what it has happened in the past and it's not going to be the last time it's going to happen in the future this is where all the rules and regulations come in mufti i guess it all comes back to the importance of having that knowledge like it's not enough to just have good intentions because you think you're doing something good but without the appropriate the right knowledge you could in fact be committing a grave sin and that's the scary part about it and just on that note of knowledge there's a lot of talk going around that coronavirus is a punishment from allah how should muslims you know confront this allegation i think it's quite clear that anything that happens if it were to bring you closer to allah it's actually the mercy of allah and if it were to distance you from allah perhaps it may be a punishment of allah so uh, if you take a look at uh, the sahaba radhiyallahu anhum during their time there was a plague does it mean they were punished the answer is no so there there were rules and regulations in place and they it was their time to be tested are you going to follow what allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam have laid down or are you going to do your own thing and some of them passed away and so on and you know in fact many people died mm. it doesn't mm. necessarily mean that it was a punishment for mm. those who were driven away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or who became oblivious it could have been but to be honest anything that draws you closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not considered a punishment it's actually a gift of subhanahu allah subhanallah i guess you reminded me i think just last night and i think for the past two nights one of the imams in in the local area he's been doing uh, qunut uh, the dua after the the final raka in the salah and he's calling upon allah asking for his help and i guess this is a sign that if this is what you're doing in this time then i guess from what you're saying it can't be a punishment because it's bringing us closer to allah allowing us to return to allah and i guess that's what all muslims right now should understand uh mufti i seen something on your instagram uh last week yes something which really took me and it was just incredible i saw your reception in i think it was sierra leone Oh yes. Was it Sierra Leone? Last yes, that's right. So there was like hundreds of thousands of people. I, I don't want to over exaggerate. How many how many people were there? Well look, I like to put it at tens of thousands. Tens people of have thousands. taken it to 100,000. Some have gone this way that way, but look, no one was there counting the exact numbers. Wow. But it was uh, the biggest they've seen and this was the second time it happened in that country. Allahu Once Allah. was two and a half years ago and then the second was I've recently Allahu akbar I saw that drone that drone shot and I think I guess we should play that drone shot right now as as a public speaker as the mufti how does it feel to stand in front of so much people do you know i'll be honest with you yeah. i always say to myself these people are here for allah and his rasul not for me and it keeps me grounded i i've never not once have i ever felt you know that it's me or i'm a big guy uh because i you are not actually allah can drop you in a second wow So I I alhamdulillah people ask me how do you cope you know I don't cope I just do it for Allah 
I was with uh, the singer Zayn Bika, the Munshid. Yeah, he's a champ, Zayn and Bika. Yeah. yeah, he's a lovely brother. I told him, he asked me, how will I do this? Because it's the biggest that he ever attended. Yeah. I said, my brother, just, just think to yourself as you're there that I'm just singing to my family. Subhanallah. And when, wallahi, when he came off, he told me, I, I, I did what you said and I managed. Alhamdulillah. And you know, you just need the first few minutes of that, uh, that courage. Yeah. After that, it goes. And uh, there was a bit of stampeding and so on. <laughs> Mashallah, you know, with so many people. Yeah. So normally, I don't even get excited anymore. Wow. Meaning, I don't even get worried anymore. Wow. Because I know th it's the love of the people. And can I tell you what exactly they love? Yeah. They love qala Allahu wa qala Rasul. That's what brought them. And I always tell myself, if your product was not qala Allah, qala Rasul, they wouldn't even know you and they wouldn't even bother coming. So it's not you. You know, I give an example of McDonald's. Sorry to use that example, but yeah. you know, if someone we says... We call it down here. Yeah, Maccas, Maccas. Yeah. Maccas. Yeah. So subhanAllah, if someone, uh, you know, likes the product of McDonald's, they're not going to thank the manager or the person working there. They're going to say, wow, McDonald's, wherever, you know, it's McDonald's. So yeah. when, when I am, I'm just a worker at, at a branch. Subhanallah. And uh, if people are excited, it's excitement about the brand, not, wow. and that's the deen. That's Allah and his Rasul. Wow. That's actually uh, beautiful advice to keep anyone involved in da'wah. Anyone grounded. involved in any da'wah. And uh, that example, I use it also for the issue of uh, professional jealousy amongst du'at and yeah. ulama, scholars. And I always say, if you really worked for Allah, you would never be jealous of another person who's working for the same Allah. Why would a ma branch manager of one McDonald's get upset when another one opens in the same city? They would be excited that the company is benefiting. SubhanAllah. That's right. We're proud, we're, we're proud for the deen of Allah because at the end of the day, it's not us that we're trying to promote, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you ever feel like, and I'm sorry to go personal, but do you ever feel like Allah is going to ask me about this? Like, 100%, uh, like, all the time. <laughs> Every time I feel that Allah is going to ask me, and, and I, I, I do a lot of istighfar, seek the forgiveness of Allah, because you never know. You know, I, I look at uh, Zain Bika, for example, yourself as well. Mashallah, I, Allah's used you in a good way. And trust me, I always pray positive du'as for everyone. You know, Brother Steve Dablis with his own uh, acting and stage, whatever please. else he does, yeah, yeah. mashallah. Alhamdulillah. A lot of the brothers in their own way, trust me, it's a branch of McDonald's. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I actually appreciate that about you. And uh, personally, me, I actually want to take this opportunity and actually, Allah, from the bottom of my heart, I, I thank you. Wallah. Because if I've seen that in you. You, when even with myself personally, uh, I don't want to like publicize anything. But I remember when you saw me that first time, you, you made me feel like I'm doing something for the dean, and you gave me that encouragement, that motivation. And it's not jealousy. It's not you know, oh, I'm the best. I'm I'm the most important. It's like let me f see whoever's trying to work for this dean, and I ask Allah to make us sincere in this. But you were like, let me let me let me pop you up and let me give you some words of advice, and it was so. Humbling for me, but at the same time so motivational and I just want to thank you Allah from the bottom of my heart May Allah accept it from us. I promise you the idea is to enter Jannatul Firdaus And the way we're going to do that is by benefiting maximum people And I can only benefit a small number that Allah has allowed us to benefit But if I encourage others, I get the reward of what you do as well So I mean, it's, 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 it's a business plan in my mind When Allah I encourage you and anyone else, I can give you one quick example uh, when, I, when I was in Malaysia many years ago, they had invited me and they, they titled that uh, event as Mufti Menk Live in KL, right? Yeah. So I spoke to the brother and I told him, why don't you change the name, take my name out of this, mm. you know, after the first one, and make it uh, a name where even if I'm not there, this thing can continue. Because I was busy thinking if I die, this whole legacy is going to stop, you know. So they changed it to the Straight Path Convention. And trust me, it happens in my absence. And it, it keeps going with all sorts of different scholars. And I even told them, I said, why don't you invite other scholars, not just me, bring in anyone else. And the, I, the reason is people say, yes, your style is effective and so on. I believe that some of the other styles 
are also very effective. Look at Brother Muhammad Hoblos, for example. Muhammad he, Hoblos. He's, yeah. Yeah, Sorry, he's, we have to give him a shout out. Yeah, yeah. Mashallah. <laughs> he is, meaning he, he has his own way of speaking, his own way of communicating. He's quite direct. He is, uh, some people say he's a little bit loud. I yeah. think it's an it's Australian thing yeah, from yeah. Sydney, you know. Yeah, it you is. Have to, you have to raise your voice, right? <laughs> yeah. But guess what? I mean, there are certain people who are not moved by my sort of approach who would actually change their lives by his sort of an approach. So it's just a different, uh, you know, when, when you go to McDonald's, not everyone's going to order the Big Mac, you yeah. know. Not everyone's your cup of tea, I guess <laughs> you could say. <laughs> Mashallah. So, so alhamdulillah, uh, everyone is doing good work and we need to actually acknowledge it, promote it and think about the day I'm going to die. Will all this stop and come to an end? If the Mashallah. answer is yes, then you have lost. Mashallah. Allah, Allah bless you, man. You're always... You give me that inspiration. You, your, your your answers are always so I think so beneficial for everyone watching. And I ask Allah to unite us all um, in Jannah. Um, I mean, please ask about me in Jannah. And may Allah unite us in the dunya I first. Mean, you know, I we are so that, fragmented. That, that's what I actually, I actually wanted to bring that up with you, Mufti. You've been around. You've been through the dawah. You've done years in this industry. There's different fragments. There's different sections. There's different, I guess, uh, shades of people. We have. Let's be honest, we have like the Sufi side, we have the Salafi side, we have the different flavors of the Muslims around the world. When it comes to unity, what is the potential in today's day and age to see unity? And Can I know it's a bit of a controversial thing, but no, no, it's not you're controversial. a uniting voice, Mufti. Wallahi, I look at you as a uniting voice in this regard. What's your opinion? It's not controversial. It's very interesting. You know, I... I, I love to follow the word of Allah to the letter as best as I can, right? Mm. We're human. and So Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ In a nutshell, you know, Allah is describing who can there be better than the one who calls out to Allah, does good deeds and says, I'm a Muslim. Mm. I promise you from day one, I've stuck to that, to say, I will call myself a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. Someone says, what are you? I'm a Muslim. But what exactly are you? I'm a Muslim. I'm exactly a Muslim. You know, what do you follow? Then I can explain. I follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah. You know, as per the understanding of the first generations of Muslims. Yeah. No, but what exactly do you mean? I say, I mean, I'm a Muslim. That is the only uniting factor according to me. SubhanAllah. The minute you have a different answer, it's not a uniting factor anymore. I guess there's that verse in the Quran, Sammakum. But to be honest, there are people who say, no, this sheikh said that you can't call yourself Muslim anymore. This, the other sheikh said, and I always say, those are their opinions. Yes. I, am using, I am using the evidence from the Quran to prove Itself, my point. Subhanallah. Yeah. So I also have an opinion. And, and those opinions are opinions of mere mortals. They could be top scholars of their time. But to be honest with you, they still have, in a certain way, contradicted the Qur'an. I don't care what people say. Yeah. They have contradicted the Qur'an. Yeah. You can explain what you follow, but you call yourself a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. SubhanAllah. You heard um, it first. You heard it first from the Mufti himself. No, but to be honest with you, look, there are people who disagree and never mind. There is scope for disagreement. Yeah. Well, I disagree too. Mm. And I, I found uh, we're killing each other, honestly. Wallah. We are fragmented to the smallest peanut. Well. And you know what it's all about? This sheikh and this sheikh and this person and that person and this sect and that sect. We do know they exist. Let's talk about how would you ever be able to address people if they didn't even want to see your face because they dropped you into a box. You know, people say, this man associated with this group or this man associated with that masjid, that man. And I say to myself, they are so narrow-minded. Da'wah is supposed to be for those whom you differ with. Wow, More than those whom you just agree that's, with. That's incredible. Man. Yes, if I were, I have been invited to churches. I've been to a church. I've been what to other mean, places. What do you mean, Mufti? You've been to a church. What I mean is yeah. to call out to Allah. Subhanallah. Listen, yeah, mashallah. That's, that's to, actually, to actually tell the people what Islam stands for and so on. I didn't go there to, to, you know, to, to leave my deen or to participate in the yeah. acts of worship of another deen at all. Yeah. So the da'wah, the Prophet sallam, when at a time when they used to do tawaf of the Kaaba naked, he used to walk around saying, Ayyuhannas qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. He kept saying that. It doesn't mean that he didn't lower his gaze. He lowered his gaze. Wow. But he did that. He used to go to Hajj when Hajj was all about uh, Wathaniyya, when Hajj was all about idol worshipping and uh, Jahiliya, the period of ignorance. But there were those 
gatherings of people that he used to go to in order to get the deen across to them. And guess what? It helped wow. even a few people. And from there, it grew. Wow. So with us, uh, I feel sorry for those who sit in a cocoon mm. and who actually are in a little shell, not knowing what's outside. They refuse for you to even greet a person who's different from you. Whenever are you going to be able to convince them that what you have is more correct or is what is correct? Mufti. You won't because you don't even talk to them. Tabarakallah, Mufti, you just hit the nail on the head right here and there. SubhanAllah, that's actually... Perfect, a perfect answer. And to be honest with you, Mufti, um, I'm seeing that a lot of people, while we're busy fighting amongst each other, there's a new generation of Muslims that are out there today. They're out there on TikTok, they're out there on Instagram, they're out there on Snapchat. And while we're busy, you know, fighting amongst ourselves over these mere labels, there's a whole new generation of Muslims that we're not getting in touch with. And it scares me. Do you know how big TikTok is? I think it's the second largest after WhatsApp. Are you going to go on TikTok? I have been on TikTok for a while, but I don't know how to use it. You don't know how to use it. The reason is I, I, I checked out what it's all about and yeah. I don't know how I fit in there. Yeah. It's I like honestly, dancing, floss, this, that. It's like a bit to me, awkward. Yeah, yeah. To me, it's... I'm trying to... You know, if 10,000 of the mashayikh can get onto TikTok, we'd actually have a coup. <laughs> <laughs> but to, it, it's not, you know, it's a platform of gathering. To me, it's like the uqad and mijanna that used to happen at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and the, the tawaf around the house naked. That's what TikTok is. So, so are we going to go there saying, Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu? Yeah. Or are we going to just shy away and let someone else take over? You will be shocked at, uh, uh, you know, when I, when I initially uh, put open an account there and... I thought to myself, I wonder how this thing works. And, you know, with the help of some of the younger generation, yeah. they started showing me things. I said, you know what? I, I don't know how I'm going to fit in here. I did, can't. Did you I give mean, it a try? Did you at least put up a post? Not really, actually, because what to do, how to do it. But th the point being raised is, yes, we need to somehow. There will be mashayikh and there will be scholars and others besides me, mm. not me, mm. but besides me. Of, of a younger generation perhaps who might come up with strategies of how to use those platforms because that's the platform of gathering. SubhanAllah. So when I see these platforms, I have people, what are you doing on Instagram? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Listen, there are people losing their deen. We are resuscitating them. We're giving them mouth to mouth. You know, that's what's happening. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So that's why you find on the platforms, you got to be calm. You got to be cool. You got to be relaxed. And every scholar has a different approach. Uh, if you notice, I, 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 I have an, a, a unique approach of my own because I know uh, I'm not saying others are wrong. We need those approaches as well. But leave me alone. Mufti, you've summed it up perfectly. I guess there's a generation that's there on TikTok. They're on these platforms. And at the end of the day, we can't just let it go and say, oh, I'm going to leave these people there. At the end of the day, someone needs to take the step and say, I'm going to get engaged with these people. And between you and me, I personally think you're doing an amazing job. But do you know who else I think is doing a killer job right now on social media and on these platforms? Yes. Sports stars. SubhanAllah. Sports stars. What do you think? Uh, well, to a great degree, I believe that the influence that sports stars have is uh, something that they will be held responsible and accountable for on the day of Qiyamah. I'm talking of the Muslims. Mm. Uh, not to say the others won't, but that's on a different level. But they need to at least carry themselves correctly because mm. I promise you... Uh, Imagine the sports stars pause for Salah. That, that is, and it has happened, and it is so inspiring. I mean, you have youngsters who've never thought of it starting to pray. And they say, wow, because my idol or my sports hero does this, you know what, there goes. So I, I've got a few friends of mine who are sports stars, and I always tell them... You want to drop a few names? We'll see for the... <laughs> Just be yourself. Yeah. And, and some of them have actually impacted for Islam and the Muslims way beyond any scholars. SubhanAllah. I mean, take a look at uh, a guy like, uh, let me give you, you know, one of the guys. Yeah. A guy like uh, Sonny Bill Williams, for oh, example. Well, Sonny Bill Williams, SBW. Yeah, he was my favorite growing up. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> well, he is still my favorite, not Allah was. Akbar, yeah. uh, and I've grown up, I think. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, uh, just with his akhlaq, with his character, with his character, you know, with uh, his concern for the deen and so on, uh, his straightforwardness, his, you know, the pure intentions you can see, uh, that's an inspiration. And he just has to be himself. That's it. The same applies to someone like, say, uh, one of the footballers, you know, Sadio Mane or Mo Salah or any one of those. They just have to be themselves, good Muslims. That's it. They don't need to go out and start, uh, you know, uh, uh, using the uh, 
knowledge that they might not have mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, deep knowledge and uh, give lectures and talks. No one's saying that. You don't have to do that. That's not your field. You know how to kick a ball. Just kick it properly and Sorry. just be a good Muslim. You That's know? it, man. That's it. And I guess at the end of the day, we've got all these youngsters looking up to these guys. So, you know, use your platform, use whatever it is. And at the end of the day, the objective of da'wah, I guess, is to necessarily call people to Allah. Is, is that is that what we consider the, the goal of da'wah? It's not to get everyone to becoming a sheikh or a mufti or another mufti mink, although we would all love to be one. The goal of da'wah is to essentially call people to Allah, am I right? Call people towards Allah, bettering themselves. That's uh, the idea, sahih. Mimman da'a ilallahi. You call towards Allah. And one thing that I've noticed also amongst the, some of us as uh, those who preach and those who are teachers and those who invite people towards Allah, sometimes because we've studied in an institute, we haven't interacted with the reality on the ground. Mm -hmm. And sometimes because we haven't mixed with the people and we have a lot of knowledge, but we don't have the wisdom. And sometimes because we don't know the reality, we tend to address matters in an idealistic way that is very far sometimes for the people to grasp because of their realistic lives. So when you look at the reality on the ground and you put yourself in their shoes, you begin to respond in a way that is practical and they, they can do what you're saying rather than give them uh, an answer that is so idealistic that is very difficult for them to practice. Can I give you an example? Please, go be my guest. You, you're talking about the argument of niqab, whether it is compulsory or whether it is uh, not compulsory. Yes. Everyone knows that it is part of the deen, but mm. uh, you know whether it is voluntary or compulsory. You're talking about that argument. Uh, if you are talking about that argument to people in miniskirts, I think you have actually chased them away from the deen yeah. in a lot of cases, not because the argument uh, is not a valid one, but because you're speaking about it to the wrong people. You're speaking of something ideal, for example, to people who are living a real life of challenges. Are you going to help these people by explaining to them how, uh, what, you know, uh, what type of, what the minimum covering is in Islam and so on? Do so you get what I mean? I get 100%. Like there's that saying, I goes, bin nas ala qadri ala qadri, Speak to people according to their level, on their level. And, yeah. you know, and this is why I say, would you be happy if you were to see a person who dressed inappropriately suddenly cover a little bit more? 100%. That's a question. I, I, I would, 100%. I tell you what, a lot of people wouldn't. Some of the, some of the scholars wouldn't. Because why? They have this idealistic thinking where they don't care if you are improving bit by bit until you don't get to a level they think you should be upon. You are nothing to them. Well. And this is where I differ very strongly with them. And I say, if someone has improved, say, that, say in, in a lot of the countries, you know, people find it difficult to fulfill salah, you know, mm. because of so many challenges of work and weather and time zones and whatever else and the timing of prayers. Now, you and I know Islam, five daily prayers. If a person wasn't making five and suddenly they start making one, I would be a happy man. But I know that they still have to do better. Yeah. From one, they start making two. There's a 100% improvement, but they still have a long way to go. Sorry. From two, they start making three. There's another, there's another 200% yeah. from one, but you know 50% from the two. Yeah. But there's still improvement. 100%. So we who don't acknowledge improvement sometimes are actually chasing people away it's from the deen. We need to acknowledge improvement, acknowledge that not everyone's on the same level. When you're talking to them, talk to them on their level. If I was speaking to a group of niqabis in a school where everyone is niqabi, for example, my, the way I talk to them would be slightly different to if I were to just address a general mass gathering of people of all walks of life and all faiths. And then there is another very interesting point where if we're talking to people of all different faiths, how should we address them? What are the topics we address? Why are we addressing them? Sometimes mm. there is a theme, there is a reason. Some people are uh, so dry in the way they look at this, they say you're not allowed to talk to them. Why? Because these are not Muslims. How can you talk to them? How can you go to that gathering? You know? But right. they don't realize that when it comes to da'wah, calling towards Allah, when it comes to setting the example, when it comes to there being a good reason for me to have gone and so on, you cannot come and tell me don't go. That's, uh, that's now... Uh, you know, like I say, something that's way beyond 
the understanding of uh, those who know what they're doing. You reminded me of that. I think there was a hadith where I think it was Aisha radiallahu anha when she says that if the hukum, if the ruling of alcohol, was it Aisha that said that? If the ruling of alcohol came at one go, at it would one have point. Been, it, it, yes, it, it came in stages simply to make it, uh, you know, well, there are a lot of reasons, a lot of hikmah, mm-hmm. but one of it is to make it easy for them to adopt. SubhanAllah. I yeah. guess that's, that's so important. Mufti, I want you to give a heartfelt message right now. There's a lot of people watching this right now. They're far away. They've slipped up. They probably feel disenfranchised from the deen. They feel far away. They don't feel like they can connect with the, the scholars. They can't feel like they can connect with the masajid, with the mashayikh. They feel that there's a disconnect. What message would you give to such children or such teenagers or such youth or young adults watching this right now? You know, if you heard me moments ago, I said I engage in a lot of istighfar. I think that's a very strong starting point where you just seek the forgiveness of Allah, knowing for a fact that he has forgiven you. Because one of the dangers is shaitan actually comes to us and makes us think you're not forgiven, you're too far, you're not good enough and so on. And when that happens, subhanAllah, a person becomes more distant from Allah. But when you have that yaqeen and conviction that I sought forgiveness, Allah says he is merciful, he is kind, he is the most forgiving, the most compassionate, the most merciful. If I say, oh Allah, forgive me once, it is wiped out Allahu completely Akbar. Akbar. and and we take it from there and then start improving we have to improve on our company i always tell people read one verse of the quran a day one just one and then if your heart takes you to the second one you may do it but the first one you force yourself to do it and and you know what your life changes i promise you with these small deeds change your life that's why the prophet sallallahu says khayrul amali ma khayrul amali the best of deeds, that which is done regularly, even if it is very little. That's beautiful. So just a verse, one verse, doesn't cost you a thing. Pick it up, your phone, you know, Allah open the app and read a verse, read the meaning of it and keep going. Allah yibarik fiqh, Sheikh. Sheikh, I've had you for this long and I'm so grateful to have you here and it's like a dream come true to have the mufti here, a dua come true, subhanAllah. Before we end this, before we close this, I want to get a bit... You know, a bit more personal with you, and I want to end on a very, very sensitive note. Okay, Bismillah. Close your eyes, Bufti. Closed. He's actually closed his eyes. Tomorrow morning on Facebook. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Mufti Menk has passed away. Flooding news feeds, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube videos are going viral. Mufti Menk has passed away. His janazah is attended by hundreds and thousands of people on end. You can open your eyes now. How do you want to be remembered? Do you know what? As I closed my eyes, I was more worried about what would happen in the grave than how I wanted to be remembered. SubhanAllah. And uh, how I would meet with Allah and what I would say. There are a lot of times I think I've wasted a lot of time. As much as everyone thinks whatever they think, deep down in my heart, I know I could have done much better. And I know I'm just a weak human being. And I always fear people looking up to me rather than looking up to Allah and His Rasul. And I've said it a million times in my talks in public that you're going to get nothing by shaking my hand, by getting a selfie with me. It's not going to help you in your grave. It's not going to get you into Jannatul Firdaus. You know, you, you, if you're shaken by the message, it's more important than shaking the hand of a person who brought you a little bit of that message. And subhanAllah, if Allah wants, that message can last. If Allah wants, you can be forgotten in a very short time. So it's up to Allah what he does. If Allah has accepted what we do, he will co- allow it continuation. I have a lot of people who followed the pa- who followed the way I have uh, uh, you know chosen and so on. Uh, a lot of people and we have institutions in Zimbabwe where so many are learning and I've been involved in, in more before than now. But subhanallah I pray that Allah grants us that sadaqa jariya for the few people who might have changed their lives uh, for the better. Uh, may Allah accept it because I do know that the hadith says if Allah used you to guide a single person it's better for you than 
you know, some of the more valuable items of the dunya. But that having been said, I, I really, the first thing, the first thing would be, may Allah make it easy for me in my grave. Amen. Amen. May Allah make it easy for you in your grave. May Allah make your grave a rawda, a, a garden from Amen. the gardens of paradise. May Allah uh, make la ilaha illallah our last words. May Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our graves vast and spacious and make them gardens and filled with light. Amen. May Allah allow us to die with iman and Amen. to have husnul khatima, a good death. May Amen. Allah protect us from having a disgraceful death or being disgraced before we die. You know, Amen. And that's why I always say, don't get too excited with those who are alive because tomorrow they might do something that will be so embarrassing. You will you will feel so hurt uh, to have associated with that person. It can happen. May Allah not let it happen Amen. to us. Allah us. But always ask Allah to protect us from shaitan, to protect us from disgrace. You know, People can be framed as well. People can be falsely accused mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And false accusations do have uh, an impact in the minds and hearts of masses mm -hmm in this age of social media, sometimes more than the truth. You know, this falsehood spreads more than the truth. If you look at, sorry to give you the example, but the toilet paper video from, from, from Australia, uh, it was a joke because toilet paper does nothing to save you from, from coronavirus. coronavirus. Yet the whole world took toilet paper Lashed away. Onto it. You're not getting it anywhere in the world. It's toilet fine. paper. So imagine that false notion that toilet paper is needed for coronavirus, which doesn't even cause diarrhea, has, has actually, and even if it did, the, the, the toilet paper doesn't clean it, actually. <laughs> oh, God. That false video actually convinced tens of millions of people across panic. the globe to panic. Allahu Akbar. So if you were to say the truth, your voice wouldn't even be heard. SubhanAllah. It's crazy. Absolute madness. Mufti, from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sure from the bottom of the heart of everyone watching around the world, Allah Yubarak Fiqh, thank you so much for coming onto this podcast. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing us with us your, your beneficial advice and lessons. May Allah bless you. May Allah reunite us in Jannah. And inshallah, we see you again next time. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you and all the listeners, all the viewers, the entire ummah. May Allah Ameen. guide humanity Ameen. to the true path and keep us all from among those who care for each other. Ameen. Number one, Ameen you know, we're believers. And uh, number two is even those who don't believe, we're actually connected through Adam and Hawa. Uh, whether you like it or not, it is a fact. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. There you have it, guys. Mufti Ismail Mink on the podcast today. Jazakallah khairan for watching. Leave us feedback, suggestions for future content, and we'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.